Wendy, why am I dressed as a creature of the night in the middle of the day? Does uh, it have anything to do with the animal that we're talking about? Steve, it's our zoo adventure. Yes. Didn't you get my email? You gave me this strange cape and hat to wear. And I do have an animal to share with them. It's a bat-tastic zoo adventure today with vampire bats. And we are both ready to go. Are you ready? I'm ready to go. All right, guys, Kim, just keep her. Kim just called me, and she's going into this cave. How do you get into a cave like this? Steve, I'm pretty sure she's going to have to spelunk in. Wendy. Is it spelunk? spelunk? Really? You don't spelunk, spelunk, in? spelunk into a cave like this? We're inside. So, but I just still don't see a door. Well, yeah. There's no way. I mean, look, where is she going to come in from? Exactly. Maybe from the top. Maybe, maybe she's, she's going to come from the top. Spelunk in. Maybe she's going to repel. How about that? I like repel. I like spelunk. You like Splunk? All right. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, Keeper Kim's pretty amazing. <clears throat> no, she wouldn't, is. She wouldn't put it past me if she Splunked in. She got mad skills. Look at this awesome I don't cape. think. Oh, What's oh, that? There's Whoa. There's action. There's action. I see bats flying around. Whoa. That was crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh. There's another one. They know something's happening. I wonder how many bats we have. Oh. I can't wait to talk to Keeper Kim about these it's guys. so cool in here. They're amazing animals, too. Whoa. Hey. What? Oh, it's a door. It's a door? Wendy, it's a door. I knew that. How'd you know that? Uh, because I was a keeper here for 10 years. I actually was the bat keeper for oh, 10 years. Oh, that's, and you were playing. Why? Why you make me look like that? Because it's fun. It is fun. That was awesome. So it looks like she's getting, um. Does she have a flashlight getting, on her wrist? Yeah. Hands free. It's a bat light. It's her bat light. I love it. So she's basically getting her eyes on every single bat in this cave. Hey, Keeper Kim. Some some keepers, you know, they, they're just oh, look. looking for a giant giraffe or they're getting their eyes on. Can you hear us, Keeper Kim? Can you tell me how many bats are in there already right now? 34. 34 bats. Let's follow her light. Are you she, kidding me? She's looking in I'm all gonna scoot the nooks and crannies for the bats. So, Wendy, you said you were a keeper here. Is it hard to find 34 bats? Yes. Look at all those stalactites and Not stalagmites. Yet. Stalactites, I have to hold on tight so they don't fall. Stalagmites, you might trip over. Yes. And look, so at, she's, she's, look at Keeper Kim all contorted in yeah, there. Holy she's, cow. She has gotten herself. We told you she's got mad skills. I'm using my, my flashlight out here so you can see a little better. This is what we call the... The back scratcher, the back breaker. She's got to be careful getting out of there. Yeah. I've oh. left my uh, my scalp on that many times. So she's cleaning clean the, glass the glass and everything from huh? the inside. And she has to use a special, um, she can't use like Windex on the inside, right? Because oh, the, they're the bats. Animals. Yeah. yeah. So she's using a, a vinegar. I'll get out of the picture. That's so neat. Base. So another side of the keeper caring part, right? Yeah. You have to know what kind of materials you can use to care for the animals. You have to know what kind of materials you can't use for the animals. I still can't go to the fact that she's got a flashlight on her wrist. This little guy's hanging out right down here, staring at us. How amazing is this? And if, uh, the funny part is if you do a really good job cleaning the glass as a keeper, uh, sometimes the visitors walk right into it. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> they don't, uh, when they come in this nocturnal hall, they don't let their eyes adjust oh, long enough. Oh, sure. And then uh, you'll hear a plunk, and that was a visitor uh, running into the glass. That's, that's, that's kind of funny. Now, it's a little bit lit in here right now, Wendy. Yeah. That's not the way it normally is, right? It gets a little darker over the day. Okay. Uh, but there is some lighting in there just so uh, the guests can see the bats. And bats don't live in complete darkness. I think that's, that's one of those myths people don't realize. Yeah. They don't, they don't avoid, I mean, they're not avoiding, and light doesn't hurt them. No, and when they're even outside hunting, there's moonlight. Right. And sometimes moonlight is just as bright some nights. It is. And some bats actually have, we're going to talk about vampire bats for the most of the part today, especially when Keeper Kim comes out. What is she doing now? Oh, I bet our digital guests know. They're pretty savvy when it comes to... What is she doing? To, 
what keepers do for the animals. Does she not realize I have a presentation to do and she just keeps <laughs> bringing stuff out here? She's making it uh, interesting in there for the animals. I bet that's the furniture. Furniture or the other fancy science word. What's that fancy E word, guys? I know we're taped, but Wendy and I are there answering your questions. Oops. Speaking so, of running into the glass. <laughs> doink! That's enrichment, right? So maybe the bats will hang from that. Kind of gives them another obstacle to, to fly around with. Some camouflage. Here comes another piece of furniture, a log. Put it in. Maybe they'll hang out with that log. So just put a log in there. They can hide inside that. It's hollow. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's oh, completely nice. Completely hollow. Okay. And a big old stump. Now what's she doing? Oh, now we're getting to the good stuff, Steve. No way. Yep. Is that really what I think it is? That's exactly what you think it is. What do you think, good digital guess? It's chow time. It's chow time. Chow time for me is all about pizza. Not my idea of chow, but... It's red. It's runny. And it's important. We'll talk about them and what they eat with Keeper Kim. But I think you guys have an idea what that might be. So uh, she's part, almost like part bartender. She's part bartender. Do they get water too, Wendy? Yes, yes they do. Uh, the water, just like a lot of the other habitats uh, here at the zoo, that every animal here gets water. You just can't see it, except here I can show you. Oh, you can. oh okay. It's right there in that bowl. There's a water bowl there. But I do, and then I think... around this corner, where you can't see, there's also another water bowl. Okay. They don't usually drink water. Like, but a lot of their water probably comes from, from the yeah, bottom, right? Yeah, but sometimes they will drink water. Okay. So we offer it. And even if they don't drink water, maybe they want to take a bath in it. Maybe they want oh, really? to... That's cool. It's in, it's, uh, it's its own enrichment as well. There's the... You have several different feeders in there? Yes, yeah, sort of the same reason why you probably have separate cat bowls for your cats, oh, separate dog okay. bowls for your dogs, because there is a hierarchy mm -hmm. in the bats. So this way, very social everybody alarm, gets food. Nobody has to fight for food. Nobody will get chased off of the food. And if they do, they can go to another bowl another for bowl, yeah. blood. Whee. That is so neat. So she's just doing those, making sure that it goes those last minute IDs on everybody. I mean, yeah, a, really, a really quick, a cheap way to come into the in, in here is if you have your hand in front of your face. <laughs> I mean, look at that. So come in, when you come look at here, put your hand in front of your face. Because if you go in with your nose, you're going to bump your nose. Wendy was saying, when the glass is clean like that. And if you, if you come into this nocturnal hall, the real key is usually you're in a hurry. If yeah. you really just stand here for 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, your eyes will completely adjust. You'll and you will see, see so much more. more things. Look at this oh, one. Oh, look at this one. Going down. He's like, yeah. We have some amazing myths to dispel with Keeper Cam while she's here. There's so many interesting things about vampire bats, and bats in general, but we're going to focus on vampire bats that people don't really understand. They're really misunderstood critters. So Keeper Kim put her material in there, so we're going to be meeting Keeper Kim in a few minutes to learn a little bit about the individuals and kind of what it really takes to be out here. These are, this is the species, th these bats here, and actually some of the individuals in this cave that are still here from when I was a keeper are the reason why I fell in love with bats. Really? They are fascinating. Absolutely fascinating species. And there's so many different things, but whoa, jeez, you're like a bat sneaking in. <laughs> Didn't see you or Yay. hear you or anything. Hi, Keeper Kim. Keeper Kim, how are you today? I'm good. It was kind of neat. It was fun to see. I've never yeah. kind of watched and seen oh, yeah. all the other things you guys have to do in there. Yeah, so we so. do. We go in there twice a day. Twice and a day. feed them and count them and make sure everybody's healthy, look for babies. Stuff and like 34. That. We have 34. Mm -hmm. Good golly. Do you really find all 34? 
Almost never. <laughs> Not until the day when we do vet exams and we have to get all of them. You really in get hand. a hand in camp. And yeah, because they hide. And they hide. Doesn't, doesn't the zoo do an inventory? Yep. Every so often? Yes, it's coming up here in a couple days. Oh, is it? Mm hmm. And that's a time when you've got to really see everybody. Yeah, you've really got to go okay. in. And it might take a couple trips in there to see everybody. You've got to kind of check them off the list. Neat. Cool. So these guys, you put some blood out there, mm -hmm. which is cool. Wendy showed us the water. Oh, there's a bat right down here. So, 34, what, um, what's the oldest bat we have? Um, in, in the Godfather is our oldest bat, and he is in the his 40s. Go, the Godfather. The Godfather. Nice. Well, the I name love sort it. of came because the band is gold. Oh, I see. So, your young, so if he's the oldest, your youngest one is what, five or six years old probably? No, we had a no? um, bat born in December, so our youngest is six months old. Wait a minute. We actually breed bats yep this is a breeding colony we have pups often a couple times a year at least really mm -hmm. and we just got a new batch of female bats in um, in december 12 new females um, that will hopefully reproduce for us here in the colony and increase the number so why would you need to bring bats in here um to mix up the genetics so after you have oh, a colony sure. um, that's been around together for a long time they tend to be related so we wanted to get some new genetics in and Gotcha. Except the gene pool. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, I'm sure our digital guests want to know. It, that has got <laughs> to be terrifying to go in this space with 34. <laughs> it's huh, yeah. 34 blood sucking <laughs> bats. No, it is not terrifying at all. You no? can see they didn't bother me at all. They wanted nothing to do with me and they just stayed away. Um, really? That's because in their natural habitat, they're going to feed only on sleeping animals. So. I'm in there. If they were oh. to land on me and try and feed on me, I'd kind of brush them off like you would a mosquito. Sure. If you're awake, so. So it's totally 100% perfectly safe. Yep. So you're not going to get eaten up and bitten up by these guys. No, I've never been bitten. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. And look at the size. Can I? I'm, I'm gonna put my finger up here, Wendy, so you can get an idea. I'm gonna put my hand up here a little bit. So this is my hand, guys. Look how little. And I'm. So Six inches from that bat, just so you know. I'm not, it's not like it's really far away. And he's right there. They're not very big animals. Check out this skull. We have a skull, Kim. Have you ever seen a vampire bat skull? I think I have. They're amazing. This guy's going to eat right now. Oh, they always mess my storyline up. I was talking about my story. Sorry, come this, over is, here. this is more important right now, Steve. Look at that. He's like, huh. Keeper Kim? Yeah. I'm assuming that's not our blood. No. He's like, no, <laughs> you guys are talking about me. I can't eat with a, with a, with a crow. Scratch. No, we get our blood from a local beef processing plant. Oh. And uh, we bring it in once a week, and then we put anticoagulant in it so that it doesn't clot so that they can feed on it. Anti-what? Anticoagulant. It keeps the blood from clotting, and they actually have a natural anticoagulant in their saliva. I read about that. So there's actually a protein in their saliva that keeps that blood flowing. Yep. All right, well, let's talk about diet while we're, while we're here. Wendy, you want to show I know you want to show the bat. Let's wait for the bat. Okay, yeah, whatever, <laughs> Wendy. Look at them walk. They're one of the few bat species that can actually walk. I learned that's so neat. And they run. can bat. And they can, they and can bat. They can bat. <laughs> mm -hmm. They can walk. They can jump. They can hop. And they can fly. The only mammal that can truly fly is the bat. And the vampire bat is the only bat who can walk, jump, hop, and get around like that. And they That's, can actually take off from flight. I was just going to say that they actually do it straight up. From, from the ground. So there's another one of your myths, guys. These guys can get around on the ground. And when they're hunting, and you said, and we're, I think most of their diet, I mean, they're not looking for people, right? No, they're not looking for people. They're going to feed mostly on um, things like livestock. Um, some There's three kinds of vampire bats. And, oh, is uh, there? The, the other two eat primarily off of birds, and then these guys are mostly livestock, and that's why they're doing so well in South America is the, the increase in, in livestock from deforestation sure. and planting of the food. So, although unfortunate in many ways, the vampire bat has had a little bit of a benefit mm -hmm. from more people. Now we can look at your skull. No, I'm not going to show you my skull now. No way. Uh-uh. I'm trying to hold the flashlight and zoom, sorry, to our digital guest. Oh, look at that. Keeper Kim said she'd be happy to. Look how little. 
Wait, I can't even get my kick going. Look how little. That's so Where should funny. I put it? Is that good? Here, will you hold that camera on that? I'm gonna so put I it next to my shirt. Because I can't even do them. It's so tiny. There we go. Yeah, they're really tiny. They only weigh about two ounces. Two about ounces, like guys. Grams. That's like twenty large paper clips. Mm -hmm. I'm doing trying to do math in my head. Um, four or five quarters is what they weigh. One double A battery mm -hmm. is how much they weigh. So it already sort of dispels that myth of big, the Halloween, scary. big, black, and scary. Now, the shadow on your shirt is really cool because you can see the fang on the side. <laughs> yeah. They do have fang-like teeth. Yeah, and those fang-like teeth are important because they actually use those for a couple of reasons. One, they shave a little bit. They'll shave I'm gonna show the sign. a bit of the fur off of a prey, off of the uh, prey item. They are a hunter, guys. They are a hunter. That's a prey item still. So they use those front teeth to shave a little bit of fur off, and then they make a tiny, tiny, tiny incision. They're not making a big old gash. They make a tiny incision, not two holes. Right, Kim? Mm -hmm. All right, just make sure I was right. Not two holes, a little tiny cut, maybe two, maybe three millimeters. It's like a paper cut. And then they lap up the blood. They don't suck it up. Their tongue is designed to kind of act like a tube, like the bottom half of a straw. And they just kind of lap up the blood as opposed to sucking it up. Another myth. Wendy, you said, what's the, how much blood do they usually eat? Two tablespoons. Two so so next time spoon. you're you're having breakfast, look at your cereal spoon. They eat and two, two of those. tablespoons. That's it. They're not sucking the the life out of the the animal. They're not draining all of the blood. They're eating two tablespoons and moving on. That is amazing, and they have that horrible story right now. Yes, I will tell. I got to you know we got to tell you for sure. The incision can become infected. Sure, they can rarely carry rabies, but almost any mammal can. You have 99.9% .9 chance of not getting rabies from a bat. There you go. Now you come across one at home, it's on the ground, yeah, avoid it. But the healthy bats, you're not going to catch rabies from these guys and most of the time. And you're not going to come in contact with a vampire bat. In North oh, that's America. right, because they're not from around here, are they? Nope, Central America. You're not going to South come America. near a vampire bat unless you're in another country. So Central and South that. America. You might want to tell them how they find their food. Either. No. Because that's pretty awful. They go to the local store, <laughs> they wait just for like Keeper we Kim. do. They wait for Keeper Kim. <laughs> Kim delivers it twice Kim a day. Kim brings it to them, especially during COVID, because they don't want to go into the restaurant right now. <laughs> No, these, the vampire bat is amazing. Remember, they can walk, hop, jump, and run, right? So they actually fly to the ground looking for their prey, looking for a source of blood. Oftentimes, as Keeper Kim told us, um, it might be a cow. They come to the cow, and they're trying to find where the blood is closest to the surface oftentimes in an ear or near the hoof. And they have these really cool, and Wendy's showing you right now, heat sensors in their nose. That's why it sort of looks like a pig nose. What an amazing bat adaptation. They have heat sensors in their nose. And they can find where the blood is closest to the skin make that really small incision, lap up maybe two tablespoons of blood. By the way, while they're eating, oftentimes they're also going to the bathroom to keep their bodies lighter. So although food's coming out, waste, or food is coming in, waste is going out at the same time. Eat two tablespoons of blood and then take off. That's it. 
the wound does heal. Um, as Keeper Kim told us, they have an anti, and that's a protein, right? Is that a protein in the blood? Yes. And it has a name, right? Do they name that protein? Wendy? <laughs> Draculin? No, that's, that's, the, that's the something else. That's what we'll they created about. from it. I thought that, what was the name of the protein? Anyway, the, what they, that protein, however, has become very important in medicine. In human medicine, the protein, get this guys, the protein from the spit of a vampire bat. Because of that anticoagulant property, they've created something called, will you tell me? Oh, drum roll. Right? Drum roll. What would you call a medicine created from the spit of a vampire bat? What would you call it? Get creative. Get real creative, people. Real I creative have a bottle of not real material, but it's a bottle of. Dun, da, da, da. Turn it a bit the other way. Draculin. How cool is that? They literally really? named it that, not us. They named it that. No, this is not real Draculin. That's water in. This is water in, in a, a red cough medicine <laughs> bottle from my house. But again, a medicine coming from animals. We've seen it in plants. We saw it with the copperhead, the venom of the copperhead being used in breast cancer awareness, breast cancer patients. Same thing here. If I can keep the blood flowing, that's an important thing in a lot of patients. We don't want it to clot. Wait a minute. We don't want it to clot. What, how do we do that here? So when we get the blood from the beef processing plant, we put in an anticoagulant so that the blood won't clot and they can just blast it. You guys add an anticoagulant mm -hmm. here. Yep. Now, how deep is that? Yeah, you know, when in nature they're going to have that in their own saliva, so when the blood is flowing right. out of the wound, they don't have a problem with it. This clotting. keeps on going. But here we're having bowls of blood, and we need to put that anticoagulant in there. So you guys add it. I mean, I don't know why I didn't think about that because we saw you pour blood in here. And you know, as we know, blood will thicken and blood will stiffen. You know, we get a scab. That's so cool. You guys do that. You guys have to put an anticoagulant in it to keep the blood from becoming a solid. And ours here at the zoo Neat. is made of citric acid and some other natural really? products to keep it from clotting. Wow. Because sort of like your milk in your fridge, once it gets clotted it and gross, curdle. nobody wants yeah. to. Nobody wants to drink that. No, I don't want to have that. I'm sorry. I so, do love these programs because oh, there's yeah. always something in them that you got to go, wait a minute. So if you know anyone that is on heart, uh, heart has had a heart attack or yep. is on blood thinning medication, you can thank a vampire bat for their medication, which is pretty cool. Did you know they have another chemical in their saliva that's not an anticoagulant? It's something else? that they use before they even it, make the cut? Hell, I bet I know what it is. What do you think it is? I bet it's something so they don't feel the cut. Yes. They have an anesthetic in their saliva, too. I want a vampire bat. So as they're sort of licking... Can I be a, van can I be yeah. a vampire bat? As they're sort of licking um, and... So and the from when they're getting ready to shave yeah, the they're fur? they're shaving that fur, they're putting an anesthetic on the skin, which sort of numbs the skin. Numbs the skin just enough. So the animal doesn't feel the bite that's coming. Not the bite, the, 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 cut. the cut with those teeth. So, yeah. yeah, you guys, help us out. It's not a bite, it's a cut. Yeah, and we've all had a paper cut, and we've all lived to tell the story. Yeah, most of the time the animals don't even wake up when yeah. they're feeding. We always joke that the cow keeps dreaming about whatever cows dream about, milkshakes, grass, I don't know. I, I have a strange feeling of milk. they don't dream about milkshakes. <laughs> I mean, you don't know what cows dream about. I have an idea. I don't think it's milkshakes. Grass shakes, maybe. We, I learned this, they're very social animals, mm -hmm. and they actually take care of each other. Can you share with our guests a little bit about that social structure? Yeah, so these guys are really, really social, and actually it's um, kind of a new thing that people are studying because they're finding out that they're probably more intelligent than we know. Oh, really? Uh, based a lot on their social structure and behavior, but they, they live in groups of mostly females, so in this little cave over here is going to be mostly females and a few resident males. Okay. And um, and that's a harem. And then oh, the other okay. um, outsider males are going to be around the cave out here, 
um, on the outside. And so in, in a colony out in the, the hollow of a tree or a cave or wherever they live, the right. resident males are going to have um, breeding privileges with the females in the, in the okay. colony. Do they fight to get those? Are the males down? Are the males? Yeah, there's, there's definitely aggression. I mean, okay. we don't see a lot of it. We're pretty lucky, but um, sure. every once in a while you'll see them kind of pop up at each other and posture a little bit. Okay. But the cool thing about them is how social they are with each other in, in, a, in a good way. They groom each other, kind of like cats groom each other. You can see that one's oh, taking yeah. a bath right now, but they'll groom each other, kind of build those social bonds. And they'll also take care of each other's babies. Oh, no um, kidding. So you'll see the mom go off to go find a meal and, and leave the baby, and the other ones will kind of help take care of it while they're gone. Really? They, um, they're really clean. <laughs> they have to eat every couple of days. If they don't eat for, for very, it's actually a very short time, just a couple of days, right, Wendy? Uh, usually 24 hours. They, um, they can't survive that long without eating, and they'll come back to the roost, and if they haven't found a meal, they'll beg from another bat, and the other bat can regurgitate blood and feed that bat. No and kidding. They found that it's even not just related bats, so it's just kind of within the colony and making that social bond stronger. So if they haven't, they haven't fed, they can, go to some, they can go to another bat, and the other bat will help them out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And imagine if you're a bat and you, you've injured your wing or you've sprained your ankle um, because these guys feed on the ground, right, and right, you right. can't go eat um, an unrelated even like a not even a neighbor like someone you've never met will actually feed you some of their what regurgitated meal that's so neat and i and i think it's cool what do you guys think digital guests what do you think that the baby bats eat what do you think baby bats eat so a newborn bat we had one you said maybe in december mm -hmm. December, January, February, what does that bat eat? What is that baby bat eating? What's the name of a baby bat? A batlet? Pup. A batlet. <laughs> a batling? I don't know. A they, batling? A, a, bat. a pup. pup? Okay, a pup. What does the pup eat? And I'm going to throw you a curveball and remind you that they are mammals. So what do all baby mammals eat? Milk. Milk. The baby bats aren't eating blood immediately. They're feeding on milk. And I just think that's an amazing little curveball in mm -hmm. bat world. Yeah. We think, especially in vampire bats. The vampire bats are blood eaters. They're blood, they're eating blood. They're, fan okay, here's your fancy science term for today, guys. They are obligate parasites. They're an obligate parasite. In this case, the parasite is the large cow. Of course, now there's not a whole lot of detriment to the big cow. They must feed on blood. They must feed on another animal. But the pups, the babies, we need to come up with a really cool word for baby bat. The baby bats are eating milk from mom. And if mom is sick, if mom gets hurt, if mom dies, other bats will feed her milk or him milk. We'll, feel the, we'll feed the pup milk. Another part of that social dynamic. Yeah, a lot of other animals in, that, in the animal kingdom, if, if mom dies, yep. usually the babies don't make it. Yep. Uh, bats are an incredible species and are very social. Take care of each other. Yeah. They spend about 80% of their waking hours grooming themselves and each other, so they're extremely clean. And they spend a lot of that time in grooming, and that's building those bonds with each other. Amazing. I love that you said, I didn't realize they, they were studying them because of that. I didn't realize that. That's neat. Yeah. Kind of looking to see how they're does this all Yeah, happen? they're looking at like their brains at the same level as primates. Wow. Behaviorally. A little smaller. Yeah. But the structure, the dynamic. Yeah, behaviorally and how they use their cognitive wow. abilities. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Amazing social structures. What about communication, Keeper Kim? How do they kind of, how do they quote unquote, let's say talk to each other without, without using talk, but how do they communicate with each other? Um, there's a lot of squeaky sounds going on in oh, there. Oh, is there real? <laughs> <laughs> and Godfather, he's actually the uh, most talkative one. You go in there and if you, you'll always hear one bat squeaking while you're in there and that's him. Right. And he walks around. <laughs> 
And they talk to each other like that. They even think that the mothers have a specific sound for their um, babies oh, wow. like other, other mammals. Neat. Did they rely on the sense of smell or anything? Maybe babies and moms? I don't know. Are they a chemical? How strong it is in to, find, to find their babies in a nursery, yes. They would use a sense yeah. of smell as opposed but to like sound? But like for hunting, no. Because, I learned this, I love learning things. Be these guys don't use echolocation, and we'll talk about that in a second, to find their food. Remember, they're going to the ground and then using the heat. But echolocation for the bat, for the vampire bat, is primarily for flying around and avoiding obstacles. Not running into things. Don't want to run into anything. Like that branch I just put in there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Keep them kind of dodging okay. things. Where some of the insect-eating bats, they rely on that echolocation to find their food. The vampire, and for flying around, of course, the vampire bat is relying on echolocation almost exclusively for flying around and, and, and avoiding those obstacles. And then fruit bats would rely on their eyesight to find their food because I think that's they're during crazy the daytime. Cool. I mean, you could spend literally days, months, years learning about bats. They're yeah. so diverse. So that myth of being blind as a bat is truly that. Yes, total myth. Their eyesight's not horribly different than ours. It's just that they live in mostly nocturnal situations. So, so another one of those amazing myths that just persists. Mm -hmm. So I would assume they probably see more in black and white than in color because they don't really need to see color at night. Mm -hmm. So they would probably see more in a black and white and gray scale world. I That's would a good guess. That's probably a good guess. Without actually knowing the actual answer. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they also have their hearings adapted so that they can pick up when an animal's breathing very shallow and, and restfully, so that's how they know to go to an animal. They only oh. feed on sleeping animals. That's cool, so they can hear them breathing. Are you kidding me? That is neat. So you said that Godfather, kind of bouncing here for a second, because this, this is just crazy, is in his 40s. Yes. Is that, I'm assuming, that's pretty old for a bat. <laughs> that's pretty old. I think in the wild, maybe about 12 years old. Wow. And Ours are, we have a lot of them that are in their 20s and late 20s, and of course, Godfather. I wonder if that's anything to do at all with the care Keeper Camp The care provide. is amazing here. <laughs> that's well it should be. <laughs> Isn't that neat, though, guys? You're more than doubling their lifespan at North Carolina Zoo because mm -hmm. of that care they will provide. they be able to provide that food, that blood, in the appropriate manner, provide the social skills, provide the social opportunities, to have that side of it going on as well. No predators. No predators. No disease. No no weird weather. Vet checkups. Yeah. Vet checkups all the time. Oh, what did you say? You said that our vet, uh, Dr. Minter, was talking about these guys and that they provide one of the most challenging, for lack of a better word, yes. surgeries. <laughs> yes. What surgery was that? <laughs> So some of the older females in here uh, didn't need to have any more babies, and um, they had to perform hysterectomies on some of the females. And so our vet, uh, Dr. Minter, uh, performed those surgeries. They, uh, can you imagine the size of a uterus on a <laughs> tiny vampire bat? Um, but he did it, they went well, and um, there are some in here today that have had hysterectomies by our vet JB. Body length two and a half, three inches, wingspan eight, ten inches long, weight, as Keeper Kim told us, two ounces, about the same as one AA battery. You're doing a hysterectomy on a small female vampire bat. Really? Talk <laughs> about care, huh? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, I think he did. Mm. Maybe eight or so castrations in one day also. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, that was before we brought in the new group of oh, females. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Gotcha. Are they, we've learned the phrase SSP, the Species Survival Plan. Are they part of a Species Survival Plan here, do you know? I don't think they are. Are they, Wendy? Because they think they're pretty, they're pretty well they're represented. They're pretty solid. Yeah. Um, but they are, they are monitored. So you're still kind of making, oh, well, obviously they are. They're in yeah. some sort of, because you said they brought in females mm -hmm. for the breeding yeah. program. Okay. 
That's cool. Yeah, so like every um, program, and uh, they, they still say who's allowed to breed and who's not. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the ones that weren't had the hysterectomy. But. That's cool. Amazing space and amazing care mm, that you guys provide. Keeper Kim, come on over here, Keeper oh, Kim. Gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Kim, if I have to be on these things so many times, I'm going to pull somebody else in every once in a while. I'm pulling somebody else in with me. Great. <laughs> Thanks. So vampire bats, dispelling those myths, talking about the fact that they're not blind, that they're not eating so much blood, right? Yeah. They're just a little bit and a little tiny cut. Um, they do fly around at night, um, but they're not also transmitting all these diseases. They're relatively clean. No, they're not as bad as we think they are. And the social dynamics. Yeah. That they have that hierarchy. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. Such a unique animal. So if you guys have kind of picked up on some of that dispelling of those, some of those myths, even for the vampire bat. Even for the vampire bat. All right, Kim. Thank you so much. Yeah, we thanks, do appreciate guys. you guys having us having you on board today. Bye. That's setting us all up. It's always amazing to talk to our keepers here uh, and to share information with the animals that were that are under their care that they are so passionate about. Now my costume makes sense here at the desert habitat of the North Carolina Zoo in front of the bats, the vampire bats of Central and South America. We've learned so much today about them, dispelling so many myths. They don't take a whole lot of blood, just a little bit. They do fly around at night with their echolocation used to find obstacles and not their food. They don't carry a whole lot of diseases. As a matter of fact, they're very clean animals grooming and socializing with each other. Baby bats eat milk, and sometimes not from their own mother, especially if mom is sick, injured, or dead. Amazing animals in the care of North Carolina Zoo, providing fresh blood, fresh blood twice a day. Vampire bats, you all stay safe. And we can't wait to see you again in Zoo Adventures, Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Bye.